Okay, now let's take a look at DSpace's data model. DSpace has excellent documentation, and one of the things that the DSpace documentation does is it lays out the DSpace data model in this very nice diagram. But before we delve into the DSpace data model, let me give you just a little bit of history. DSpace, this is the web page for the DSpace instance at MIT, which is where DSpace was developed originally at MIT. Um, DSpace was developed at MIT to be the platform for MIT's institutional repository, which means the place where all kinds of materials would get stored, published and unpublished manuscripts, reports, theses and dissertations, syllabi, lecture notes, memos, raw research data, you name it. Now, a conversation about institutional repositories is a whole other thing um, for another time. But here's the thing, DSpace was a, was a success. It was well designed, it was reasonably flexible, MIT made it open source, so it caught on outside of MIT. But the fact that it was designed as an institutional repository platform shows in its data model. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is everything in DSpace is organized around communities. Why is that? In the DSpace documentation, it says, quote, to reflect the structure of the organization using the DSpace system, unquote. So if you look at MIT's own DSpace instance here, and at the communities defined in it, you see what you've got are labs, research centers, departments, etc. Each of those is a community, and as in the one I've circled here, um, communities can have sub-communities, and then each community or sub-community contains collections. Now, a collection can exist under more than one community, which is another way of saying that more than one community can have access to a collection. Right? From the user's point of view, you, the user, log into DSpace, and you have access to whatever collections you have access to. But you have access to whatever collections you have access to because the communities that you are a member of have those collections under them. So let's go back to the figure here. The data model says that community is the top level entity and collections are under communities. A community can have multiple collections, but it is community under which everything else hangs. Now a collection is composed of items, and an item is owned by one and only one collection. An item may be part of more than one collection, may be included in other collections, but an individual item is owned by only one collection. So you see the same structure here at both levels. A collection may be accessed by more than one community, but only one community owns the collection as its primary, the primary ownership of a collection is with only one community. An item may be included in more than one collection, but an individual item is owned primarily by only one collection. Beyond this, we don't really need to worry about it too much. A bit stream is, well, a stream of bits. It's a digital file. A bundle is a named type of bitstream, an HTML document, for example. Right? It is any collection, and I shouldn't use the word collection, but it is any set of files that collectively make up a larger thing. 
an HTML document is text plus embedded images plus embedded video maybe plus whatever else. Right? So here we have our first contrast. The first class entity in Omeka is the item. The first class entity in DSpace is the community. And why is this? Well, Omeka was created for museums originally. It's gotten use considerably beyond museums because it's well designed and easy to use, but it was originally designed by the Roy Rosenzweig, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, Center for History and New Media at George Mason University. And part of the Rosenzweig's center's mission is, quote, to use digital media and technology to preserve and present history online, unquote. And when we're thinking of presenting history, we think of museums. And when we think of museums, we think of individual artifacts presented in exhibits with rich descriptions to put it in all contexts. DSpace, on the other hand, was designed to be an information retreat. Sorry, not information retrieval. That's the other thing that IR stands for. Institutional repository platform. DSpace was designed to be an institutional repository platform. And the community contributing materials to an institutional repository is the central concern. So the difference in the intended use cases of these two platforms plays out in their data models. Neither of these data models is better or worse than the other. It's just that the purposes for which they were designed are different, so the functionality of the applications had to be different, and the way the applications understand and manage digital objects had to be different. 